Oh, I just scored it. They had the information. All right, guys, we got 530. The treasurer is going to leave the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Karen. Frank Scott. Yes, present. Mark Serbrock. Present. Ron Vaughn. Fred Newbecker. Here. Jenny David. Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. Are there any corrections or additions to the agenda? That we uh, that the agenda is presented. We have a motion. Do we have a? I'll second. We have a motion with support to uh, accept the agenda as presented. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed. Yes. Motion carries. Item three: review of minutes. We have the July eighth, twenty twenty one, regular meeting minutes. I uh, looked over the minutes. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes presented. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Serbrick to approve the regular meeting minutes from July 8, 2021. All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Yes. It's in the yes. Motion carries. Item 3B, July 15th, 2021, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Did I, I reviewed those over. minutes. Oh, there you go. Go ahead. I reviewed those minutes and I will uh, make the motion to approve them. I'll second. We have a motion from Commissioner Rebecca with support from Commissioner Scott to approve the July 15th, 2021 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, yes. no. Motion carries. July 15th, 2021 Closed Session Meeting Minutes. I believe those were. Okay. I have submitted my. I've had the opportunity to review those and I would uh, make a motion to accept the closed meeting minutes. That's, we have a motion from Commissioner Scott with uh, support from Commissioner Serbrick to approve the July 15, 2021 closed session meeting minutes. All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Serbrick, Commissioner Serbrick. Yeah. Item four, public comment on the agenda item minutes. Uh, agenda item matters, excuse me. This is the first of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 2077 to adopt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. This public, public comment period is limited to topics that appear on the meeting agenda. A second public comment period appears later in the agenda at which time public statements will be accepted on any manner or issue that is relevant on germane, germane to county government. Persons who wish to address the board are required to comply with the following. Number one, state your name for the record. Number two, speak only to the chairperson. Number three, stand behind the podium when speaking. Number four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer. And number five, follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matter. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. The board chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Is there any public comment in the room? Any public comment? Any public comment on the phone? Any public comment on the phone? Item 5A, correspondence from Wexford County. Uh, this resolution 2021 voicing strong opposition to by appointment, by appointment only services for the residents. This has been received and filed. We have item six, action on the consent calendar. The consent calendar consists of those new business agenda items that the Board of Commissioners has determined to be routine and usually manners about which the board commonly and concurs. Before putting the questions to the commissioners, the chairperson shall permit the commissioners to remove the from the consent calendar those items in which they have questions or wish to debate. You guys have anything that you wanna remove? I guess that was my question to you. <laughs> claims is the only thing separately, just because I had some questions on claims. Was the EDC separate? No, I, I reviewed I reviewed that. That was on our iPad. 
And I'll make a motion to uh, exclude F and go ahead with the, the consent on A3. Okay, I just want to read these just so the people on the phone can hear them. Uh, resolution to approve Region 9 Area Agency on Aging Fiscal Year 2022 Annual Implementation Plan. Item 7B, resolution to approve MSU Extension Secretary Job Description. Item 7C, resolution to accept a bid for snow removal and seasonal maintenance services. Item 7D, resolution to accept funds provided by the Federal Transit Administration. Item 7E, resolution to appoint a member to the Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors. So we have a motion to approve those resolutions. A motion from Commissioner Scott with approval from, or with support from Commissioner Serbrook. Can we get a roll call on that? Jenny David. Yes. Frank Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Motion's approved. Uh, claims. Who reviewed claims? I did. And round one. Huh? Round one and I. Did you see anything that I see there was the only, the only one that really jumped out at me and I kind of touched base with Karen was in the treasurer's office is the was it seventeen thousand and change. And that, that's the and they are the ones that go out and do the posting and all that for the um, foreclosure sales through the um, tax sale. So yeah. Yeah. And that was the only one that kind of jumped out at me. The other one that I asked about too was um there's a there was one from the corrections for glass, evidently one of our Finer inmates um, decided to haul off and kick the hell out, like, kick the heck out of it, and uh, it broke. <laughs> we had to replace class one of the whole cells. Yeah, I see child care was twenty five thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars this month. Yeah, that was a big one too. How much always is. And then, what was the appropriations? Do you remember? It was forty two thousand five hundred fifteen yeah, dollars. That um, was the line. Because I, I kind of looked through the list. That was I didn't see it right off. I was just curious. See, circuit court was quarterly billing. Right. Central office. Um, that was a Sentinel Technologies invoice. That's uh, IT equipment. Oh, OK. OK. So our total is $232,454.42. Make a motion that we pay the bills. I'll support. Is there any further discussion? We have a motion from Commissioner Serbrook with support from Commissioner Scott who approved the bills for $232,454.42. Can we get a roll call vote on that? Mike Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Motion carries. Item eight, unfinished business. None. There are none. Item nine, administrator's report. Okay, at the community to whole meeting, there was a question about uh, how much we'd spent on snow removal this last season. I did send an email. You might not have had a chance to look at it yet, but uh, we spent uh, for so far, should I say, uh, in this snow season, we spent thirteen thousand four hundred eighty-six dollars. We budgeted twenty-three thousand one seventy-five, so it was just over fifty-eight percent of what we budgeted. Um, we didn't have a particularly hard snow season, but it was probably a good number to budget uh, just in case it had been. Uh, we have seen uh, the chair signing a contract at the beginning of the meeting. That was the day treatment contract to get that project underway. I will be scanning that and sending it right to the contractor yet tonight. Uh, we'll have uh, possibly have them in there as early as next week. The contract uh, has a end date of September 30th. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we'll, we'll be able to hold that. I, that would be fantastic. I can tell you too that probate was able to secure the appliances this last week. You may recall we up to their uh, uh, procurement card limits so they could do that and those were all provided through grant so those are secured they will be here probably mid-september so we're hoping our contractor will be finished in that kitchen area and we won't have to pay for any kind of storage for those appliances when they get here and then uh, last thing i want to mention i'll be sending out an email tomorrow 
I tried to do it today, but um, some technical problem prevented me, but we'll send an email to all of our employees. Uh, every year, uh, MERS at their annual conference asks for two delegates to be appointed to their business meeting. And we will ask all of our employees if there are any volunteers who are interested. If we have more than one, we are obligated to actually have an election to do that. So we'll have that uh, all taken care of by your next regular meeting. And then you can uh, consider a resolution to approve uh, who we send as delegates for Ogemaw County. And that's, that's it. Is it around as far as snow removal? Is that around, we had somebody new this past year. Is that right around what we had been paying? Uh, I can't tell you for sure uh, without looking at it, but I would expect to see some fluctuation depending on the amount of snow we got in any season. It was, uh, I was surprised that it wasn't more, frankly, but uh, again, it's always a roll of dice. We right, we call the properties. And we're pretty sure that we won't go up any by the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> you Pretty never sure. know. We are talking about climate change, so that could go either way. <laughs> All right, is that it? Okay. Hi, Ron. Hello, sorry about that. You're okay. Item 10, elected official and department head reports. I'll go first. Um, we're very busy. <laughs> we started today, um, the first day of a potentially seven day jury trial. Um, training's going well. I have my second new girl starting Monday. Um, that's really it. We're doing good. Plugging along. Plugging away. Treasurer? Keep your head above water. Uh, Karen Miglowski, Oklahoma County Treasurer. Um, as most of the board knows, I have a vacancy in my office. The position has been posted for the union that will expire on Friday at 4.30. It will then be posted for the public and I look forward to getting a new employee in the office. New chapter, new beginning. It's a full-time position? Full-time. Is that it? That's it for today. Sure. I just got a couple things. Uh, I, I interviewed uh, Paul Heater. He is going to be our uh, office uh, chaplain. So he's going to be the permanent uniform. Uh, he's going to help out our officers whenever they need help and confidentially. And also, if we have a uh, high incident crime or something, we're going to, we're going to see if it helps out there. He, he will he's all strictly volunteer. Oh, good. So expect a story there uh, as soon as I get him in the uniform. And then our new hiree, uh, Brianna McLean. As soon as I get a uniform for her, we'll also have a story for her. Sheriff, uh, I had the opportunity to talk to a posse member the other day, and I'll tell you what, if there's any story you ought to be putting out, it ought to be that, I'll tell you. Absolutely. They do a lot. I mean, they're at all three parades in the county. And yeah, they, they keep the certified officers, you know, they a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, so we have six. There's any way you can get a an article about them? Yep. But I tell you, I that'd you. be the ones. I hear you. What, I, what my I, plan is? What my plan is? They have their own money that they generated. Their uh, whatever they do as far as uh, the security, and they have their own account. I want to get them in a different uniform, so we're going to work on that. Uh, we just got to work out the details because I want to get them out of the brown because the brown to me looks terrible. Old. They got the old secondhand brown uniforms, so I want to upgrade that so they look more professional. Not putting them in black. More professional. Not putting them in black. No, no, they will not be in black. Oh, okay. Well, you make them stand out there in a parade. I wouldn't want to stand out there in a black uniform. <laughs> I hear you. I know. Been there doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Department heads on the phone. Uh, Jeff from Veterans. Uh, nothing to report this week. Okay. Denise? I have nothing to report. Any other department heads? Thanks, guys. 11 manners from the floor. I don't believe that there are any. Yeah, bring up the chairs. Pardon me? I'll 
bring up the chairs later. Okay. These, these chairs are. Item 12, motions for adoption. Uh, are there any other motions from the commissioners? Item, thir two chairs. item 13, committee reports. Commissioner Serbrook. Uh, I said collecting townships uh, board meeting last night. Two hours long, longest township board meeting I've ever been at. Um, so I can coordinate the, the gypsy moss spraying. Not going to happen again. They've, they've got they've taken so much flack from people because they say that you know they sprayed too early and it's not doing anything. Without it, and I felt so sorry for them. You know, people are just going. You know, and they they did it on. They didn't have to do that. You know, they just tried to coordinate. You know, with the, the landowners and the and the service that you know provided it. Marked it out on the maps and everything so they could use the GPS. And then there's, there's people threatening lawsuits. It's, it's, it's insane. And then the other thing they were talking about the American Rescue Plan monies that they um, anticipate getting. And their intent is to go with um, broadband. So that's basically all Clacking can do. And listen to Mike from M33, they kind of mapped out. Where they had where M33 access had received requests for service. So we kind of did a map of that and it was like just over 15 miles. And evidently, under the American Rescue Plan, you're doing infrastructure, you have to pay prevailing union scale wages for their 15 plus miles. He estimated it was going to be $134,000. And one of the board members says, how much if we didn't have to pay prevailing wage? So between 50 and 60, closer to 60. Actually, I think he said 58. It's like, and they're, they're getting like 60, you know? So they could have done that. If they didn't have to pay prevailing wage, they could have done the entire area that they were looking at. You know? So they're, now between the rack and the hard place to figure out who's going to get it, who isn't, you know, so. Um, um, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Did they apply for the monies? Yes. Oh, they did? Yeah, they've yeah. got everything. Yep. They went through all the steps. They got their DUNS number and their, was a MESA number or whatever, and it was something else. To have, have all of your townships applied for their money? No. That's what I was asking. Because there's a deadline for them to. Right. It's passed. The deadline's passed. It was. I think it's the 27th. Oh. Yeah, I don't think yep. it has. Yeah, you're right. It, it is close. a close. It's yeah. just around the corner. If they haven't applied, you need to remind the to get on it. Debbie said that she spent like four hours getting everything together. I mean, you know, because they had, and I think I mentioned this before, they had like three different DUNS numbers under previous supervisors. <laughs> and so they had to get all that taken care of. And, you know, it was just, and they had they had to prove the, the address for the township hall. Well, they were getting bills at the supervisor's house, they were getting bills at the treasurer's house, um, you know, so they said not good enough. And the, and the ones that were coming to the township hall, the names didn't match with the, the current board members. So each poor lady was just pulling her hair out of her head, but she's got it all straight. So well, that's good. And, and you know, yeah. it's all electronic filing. So you right. can't at the last moment do it, but yeah. those different addresses and that could pose a problem for audit in terms of the uh, the government looking at that. Right, they got straightened out. So they, they wonderful. We're able to take and get good because I guess the consumer's power bill was they went to the to the clerk or the treasurer, I'm not sure which, and not to the township hall, you know. So it had it, the name Clacking Township, but had a different address in the township hall. And, and I attended the Sting Board meeting this morning, quarterly Sting Board. Um, they are busy, 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 and I just want to just throw this out to you guys real quick. Last quarter, they seized $147,148.50 worth of narcotics. They've gotten so far um, this year six handguns, eight long guns. The vast majority of the uh, drugs that they've taken off the street are crystal meth. Heroin, and crack, heroin and fentanyl. I mean, that's their, 
the big they got some for your headache. The hydrocodone probably would be oh. <laughs> So anyway, very informative. That's it. I'm done. Commissioner Scott. Oh. I attended three out of the four townships. Uh, um, Foster Township has been big on the gypsy moss. I invited Todd Johnson, a trustee from Edwards Township, who was a forester, to come up there and talk. But they had already got you know, uh, Julie Crick from the MSU Extension. And she explained the whole thing and calmed everybody down. I mean, they went from riot stage the week, the month before, down to just, hey, I get it. It's a cycle and it's going through the cycle. And uh, yeah, it was it was really good. Is she making rounds to townships? Because it's, it's I don't know. A she was invited by them. Oh, she was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. she's What's out of the Ross Common office. What's her name? Julie. What? Crick. It's like it's uh, from MSU. Yes. Okay. And Todd Johnson there from uh, Edwards would go any place too. He's a trustee at Edwards Township. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I wasn't able to hit the uh, road commission meeting yesterday. Uh, at the airport meeting, I was on Zoom, uh, took care of a couple small matters. Uh, with the, of course, the runway conditioning uh, uh, study is going to be coming up here soon. Um, so uh, I wasn't able. Uh, Parks and Rec, we did Parks and Rec. Things are going pretty good there. We did get some communication from the DNR here in the last just, couple of days. I just got an email today. Yeah, yeah, but we'll get that taken care of. I put, I put our administrator on it. He's gonna get right after it. For some licensing, right? Right, yeah. yeah we've, been, we've been behind a bait ball once before. Uh, it, it's the same thing as Clacking Township. It got sent around to different addresses to different people and things like that. So we'll get it straight. Madam Chair, I've got one thing I just want to. I, oh, wait a minute. I'm in the middle of my. Time. Oh, I didn't. I thought you were done. I'm Scott, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Scott, I'm, done. I'm, done. I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I did talk to Clacking Township about the ORV ordinance. Oh. Um, because between Foster and Clacking, I think those is going to have the largest impact on those two townships. So they're going to pull some of their constituents and get back with me. Um, so I did bring that up. They like the idea that um, Dean Coleman brought up about the 1 a.m. cutoff. Um, but they haven't talked to their constituents. So I mean, just the, that was kind of the board consensus was. Um, like that 1 a.m. curfew. Have we communicated with the townships yet? We have not. Okay. That's on your to-do list? It is twice now. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Vaughn? Yep. I uh, was to three of my townships. Uh, the biggest consensus was our chat was on the gypsy moss. Also uh, blight issues that uh, we're having in some of the areas and, and how to try to handle that. Uh, the city of Rose City, um, they're having a golf outing. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have my notes here. I'm in Detroit at the minute. Um, it's to uh, the funds will go to the splash pad. They're gonna they're gonna put a splash pad behind the fire station in the near future. So uh, they're working on that. Um, Parks and Rec, Craig already mentioned. Uh, 911. It was a pretty quick meeting. They did have an outage of uh, uh, air conditioner out at the tower there, out the pointer, and uh, they got Mike Bowers on it and Jesse from 911 and took care of that. And that's all I've got. Commissioner Newbecker? Yeah, I've been out of town on work, work and then uh, vacation, so I haven't been ahead of any township meetings, but. Uh, I did uh, attend the insurance meeting, um, which happened to be at the same time as the, the uh, airport meeting. So uh, that's all I really got to report at this point. I had since our last meeting was the EDC um, meeting. That business expo is tomorrow night downtown. 
Um, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty good turnout. Uh, the EDC is also diligently, um, and I better let them know about that deadline. It is the 27th. Okay, um, diligently working with townships because I don't believe, um, and my township meetings are all in the beginning, the first week of the month. So none of them had applied for uh, the monies. So the EDC was was discussing ways to reach out to the township and, and Mary, the director, had even talked about having a workshop, um, having everybody basically come to her versus and, and getting some extra support um, from the treasurer and from you. Um, I don't know if she's reached out to you guys yet, but I will touch base with her tomorrow. I haven't heard from Mary, but anything I've received from Treasury, I have forwarded to all the township treasurers as it comes in. Out to all I think the process appears to be fairly frightening to them, but uh, hopefully they don't. Um, we would be this, available to help them. Less this pass. We talked with them and they're interested in doing it, but they're not sure uh, I'm available and uh, I'm sure she'd be available to direct them. We've got it. For me to do that, I will do that as part of my overall uh, representation for you at the cost. But I think um, what you step in and help me get that. Hey, but miss that money. Yeah. It's going to be huge. Yes, they're all talking about broadband. Um, Gypsy Moss was a big thing in our, our townships as well, of course, this past month um, and roads, but that's that's about it for me. So all I had was ADC. Uh, we got anything else, guys? That's it. Item 14, we got general public comment. This is the second of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved resolution 2077 to adapt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. This public comment period is reserved for public statements on any manner or issue that is relevant or germane to the county government. Persons who wish to address the board are required to comply to the following. One, state your name for the record. Two, speak only to the chairperson. Three, stand behind the podium when speaking. Four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer. Five, follow directions from the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matters. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. The Board of Chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Is there any public comment in the room? Uh, good evening, my name is Glenn Gutierrez, Oklahoma County resident. And I would just like to say that it's now been nearly nine months since uh, the voters passed a millage for a 24 hour road patrol and the sheriff still has not provided 24-hour road patrol. So I would just encourage action uh, by the board to stop the misappropriation of tax dollars. Is there any other public comment in the room? No public comment? Is there any public comment on the phone? Any public comment on the phone? Item 15, discussion with county attorney in closed session. County, county attorney Greg Meehan will present findings from the internal investigation authorized by the Board of Commissioners on April 8, 2021. This discussion will occur in closed session. I'll move to be moved into closed session with your attorney. Support. We have a motion with support to go into closed session for the purposes of the discussion with the county attorney. Uh, can I get a roll call on that? Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Benny David. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Motion carries. We will go into closed session. Uh, I think he's going to. He's, Brad and Ron have to stay on there. Yeah, you gotta stay in here. Okay. I'll send you an email. I just can't move back. Are you okay? No, just let me know. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to make a motion to go back into regulars. I'll uh, make a motion to go back into regulars. Uh, session. Support. Do you need a real clever for that? No. Do you? I don't think so. You've already done that. So okay. No. So we're back in, in regular session at 650. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion with support to adjourn. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Yes. 
Motion carries. We're going to be adjourned at 6.50. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I did. I'm waiting.